Right, today we would like to have a good look at erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Now, if you just look at the term erythrocyte sedimentation, ra sedimentation rate, you can already see that we're dealing with erythrocytes, which are uh, essentially red blood cells. Sedimentation, which is just a term for how particles in a solution would settle out or sediment out into different layers and let's just say layers there layers and then lastly we're talking about a rate and in this case we're going to look at a distance measured in millimeters uh, over a period of one hour and we'll come back to that in a minute so to perform an ESR or an erythrocyte sedimentation rate, we basically collect blood in a tube, also called the, the Westergren tube. Let's just say West, Westergren. And that's why this is also called the Westergren ESR. And this particular tube is measured it's got little markings measured in millimeters and this top one here would be a zero that would let's just say halfway here to about 100 these tubes are usually about 20 centimeters or 200 millimeters long so that would be 200 okay and that will be 50 and 150 so what you would do is fill up one of these western tubes with blood and allow it to stand vertically for a period of one hour so we'll let it stand like this for one hour and over that period of one hour the blood cells will settle out and you will get something like this so let's just see what we have here so after one hour the tube looks a little bit different from what it looked in the beginning and now essentially you have a layer of red blood cells here at the bottom so these are the red blood cells that have basically settled down with uh, amongst others gravity they've moved down and at the top here um, let's get another color for that so in this part oh, it looks like the same um, you have some plasma so let's be clear from this that you need a tube with an anticoagulant otherwise obviously you'll just end up with a clot and not with a nicely layered end product so how do we measure the ESR in this tube basically we take uh, the distance in millimeter from this zero point up here to this interface between the red blood cells and the plasma which in this case is around about a hundred so the, the the question is what does this mean and what causes differences in settling of red blood cells now under normal circumstances red blood cells won't really settle much they may move down uh, maybe 5 10 perhaps 20 millimeters depending on things like age uh, gender etc but when they settle more than that that may be an indicator of something that is uh, wrong and usually that something that we're talking about would be inflammation so an ESR is a marker of inflammation but what is very very important to note here that is that this marker is totally non-specific in other words you cannot really make a particular diagnosis from uh, the ESR you can just say something is going on but we do not know what so if we look at the way that this works you can get some clues as to what the underlying cause may be and let's just quickly zoom in on this process of red blood cell settling so if we take the red blood cells let's take a red blood cell here 
all right and there's another one there and another one there so under normal circumstances these red cells contain on their surface a negative charge it's just some minus signs around here to indicate this negative charge and as you know negative charge will repel each other so normal under normal circumstances these little clouds of negative charge around the red, the red blood cells um, will repel the other red blood cells so it will prevent them from sticking together so we call that the zeta potential zeta potential that's not that important to know what the name is but just to let you know that there's some charge there that keeps them away from each other now if you have an episode of infection or inflammation the body would usually respond to that by producing amongst other uh, molecules from the liver so if that's uh, let's say symbolic of the liver uh, the body will produce a number of proteins um, we tend to call them acute phase reactants and one important example here is called fibrinogen which as you know is also very important in blood clotting now for fibrinogen is positively charged so what would happen here is the fibrinogen coming into this mix will when it increases in the blood will neutralize this zeta potential and these red blood cells would now not repel each other let's just go with a little arrow like this and they will now start sticking together and as you can see here they form these little stacks stacks of red blood cells and they have a special name called rouleau you may have heard of this term and it is something we can often see on a peripheral blood smear little stacks of red blood cells and these tend to settle much quicker so the more more stacks or let's say the more fibrinogen you have the more these red blood cells will stick together and form a rouleau and the rouleau stacks will settle down very much quicker in this fluid medium and you will end up with a higher ESR or erythrocyte sedimentation rate now like fibrinogen there are also other important molecules that can do exactly the same uh, another one that is also generally response to infection would be the formation of antibodies the body would make antibodies that's an antibody there with its two heavy change and chains and two light chains so you can see body will make a whole lot of antibodies which are also positively charged and therefore can do exactly the same thing that the fibrinogen did there and they can also neutralize the charge between the red blood cells causing the formation of rouleau and then eventually a high ESR so here's an example of what this rouleau looks like on a peripheral blood smear you can see a little stack of red blood cells there um, and that is often indicative of some underlying inflammatory or infectious process but when the ESR is very high let's say uh, greater or equal to 100 that usually indicates some serious underlying disease classic examples would include something like multiple myeloma which is a plasma cell disorder and produce a lot of antibodies but there are also other malignancies that could have high ESRs secondly things like uh, connective tissue disease which is autoimmune in nature once again with a lot of antibodies but also an inflammatory process where fibrinogen may be increased then there's uh, infections like uh, tuberculosis for instance all of these could give you a high ESR and need to be considered when you see that well I hope that clears it up for you we will probably do another session on the ESR interpretation in a later video for you